Hello, I'm Bob Denton, and welcome to another conversation. There's a new and first-of-its-kind television station coming to Southwest Virginia. We're joining me to discuss the mission and programming of this new venture is Julie Newman. She's Vice President and General Manager of PBS Appalachia. Thanks so much for joining the conversation. Hi, Bob. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, this is really exciting. Uh, the more I learn about it, not only is it unique, very special to South uh, to um, Southwest Virginia. Fernando, tell us about PBS Appalachia. Totally new station. Totally new station, but still sort of under the umbrella of Blue Ridge PBS. So all of you are familiar with watching Blue Ridge PBS over the years. And uh, traditionally, we have served the entire western portion of the Commonwealth from Roanoke westward all the way through Southwest Virginia. Um, but at one time, we were forced to shut down the transmitters that served Norton and Marion, Virginia in Southwest. And so that area of the Commonwealth has not been served as robustly as we think it should be served. And so we came up with this great idea. We said, how can we serve people better, represent the area, and put shows on television that reflect the people who live there? Mm. Um, but how can we do that, you know, with with a mind towards the future and technology, our options were either to put a transmitter up, which costs about $1.2 million, mm -hmm. or we could sink that same amount of money into really talented people and really high-end equipment to create programs um, that reflect the people without using an antiquated technology. So we said, let's build a digital station. And that's exciting. And it is one of the first digital PBS stations in the nation. Correct. It is. So what that means, mm -hmm. the only difference is there is no transmitter. And what that means for you at home is that you won't be able to pick us up over the air. But you can still pick us up on your smart TV, on your computer, on your laptop, on your phone, on your tablet, any other way that you watch television except with an antenna. And that's um, especially with broadband coming out and expanding. Um, so there's cable um, stations. So we are making our signal available to all the cable stations in Southwest Virginia. Sometimes people will come up to me and say, oh, will you be able to watch me on you know, XYZ cable station? And my response is, we are certainly going to make it available to those stations, but it is up to the cable providers themselves whether or not they choose to carry the signal. And certainly online. Of course. And when we talk about some of the smart TVs or be able to be special app, I'm assuming? So yes, online you can watch us at pbsappalachia.org and then we're coming up with a brand new app uh, for your phone or your tablet which will have our on-demand content and it will also have our streaming content that you think of it's not live TV, most TV that you watch comes from a recorded system, but it's a linear stream and it's what people think of as live TV. So you'll be able to watch that stream or you can watch content on demand the same way you would on Netflix or Amazon Prime when you look up a show and you can, you can click on it and watch it. So we'll be available in both ways, as a stream like you would watch on TV mm -hmm. and as a la carte ah. as you would in on demand. And so the focus in terms of the territory, uh, what, what give us a sense of it's 13 counties? 13, 14 counties, um, depending on how you look at it, but it's all, this, it's all the counties in Southwest Virginia, as far west as Wise, um, and it covers the traditional counties of Southwest Virginia. Um, Floyd is a county that may be best served because it's gonna get coverage from both Roanoke and PBS uh, Appalachia. Yeah. And then we'll also serve the three cities in Southwest Virginia, which are Galax, Bristol, and Norton. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the program, original content, both original content and PBS programming. So one of the things people ask as well is, will I still be able to see all the programs that I love on PBS? And the answer is yes, you'll still get your kids programming, you'll get you know, Masterpiece Theater, you'll get the News Hour. Um, so you'll have your traditional PBS programming interwoven with local content that we produce at PBS Appalachia and still some of the local content that you already enjoy on Blue Ridge PBS. We will be able to feed it all into a stream. And some of the local content in the program are there. Give us a sense of examples. What are you thinking about? What are the areas or topics per se? So right now we're in production on three series. Mm. Um, one of them is called um, 
French Magnolia Cooks. And you, it sounds like it's a cooking show, and to some extent it is, but it's really a lifestyle show shot in Southwest Virginia. The host, her name is Chef Missy, she's exquisite. Um, but she takes you from either the harvest or the farm or the hunt to the preparation of the meal and then to sharing it with friends and family paired with a wine from a sommelier. So for example, the first episode in that series is called Pheasant and we actually take you on a pheasant hunt. Oh, wow. <laughs> and we show you how to prepare the bird. We sh she shows you how to, how to um, you cook it and then she shares it with friends and family. So, so some topics include in that particular show, um, goat cheese, apples, mm. chicken. We take you um, to a beautiful farm in Southwest Virginia. Um, and it's all exquisitely shot. Uh, the cinematography on these shows are just breathtaking. And we are hoping this is going to be an award-winning show right out the gates. Wow. So that's one of our series. We have three. Um, another one that we're working on is called Life of a Musician. And you can actually already see that at pbs.org. It's shot in Danville, Virginia. And it's really a sit-down, one-on-one show uh, with pretty well-known musicians um, that, that take you through their style, uh, their biography, and of course they play some really great music for you. Absolutely. And the third show is one that I think is going to become our signature series. Mm. It's called Hometowns, and it really goes to the core of what PBS Appalachia is trying to do, which is to profile the people and the towns of Southwest Virginia. So each episode will focus on a specific town, and it will just highlight what makes that town tick, what are some of the hidden gems of that town, and, and who are some interesting people who live there. And some of the stories are really... Um, heartwarming. Some of them are kind of funny, um, but all of them are beautiful and all of them make you say, wow, I really want to visit that town. And as you talk about the programming, I've heard you in another format say, we're going to tell the story of Appalachia. In your words, what does that mean? When I think of Appalachia, I think it is three distinct things. I think it is land, it's beauty, it's wide open spaces, it's mountains, it's blue skies, um, and it's the land that we live off of and harvest. Secondly, it's people. It's talented, interesting musicians, artists, farmers, um, culinary experts, and just cool people, coal miners. Um, it's the people that make up the heartbeat of Appalachia. And then I think the third piece of Appalachia, when you think of, of the core of what it is, is it's a proud history and, and culture. It's a very distinct culture. I think there's no other place in the entire world like Southwest Virginia, and we are right there in the heart of Appalachia. And the land, the people, and the culture, I think, are what make it so unique. Absolutely. Well, one of the things that impressed me when you're talking about this from a visionary particular standpoint is, wait a minute, we have a commitment to community engagement across the area of economic development, access to information, education, cultural enrichment. Talk a bit about that commitment because that, yes, there'll be these programs, you can turn it on and you can watch it, but this endeavor and venture also has a, wants to engage the community. You have to remember that the heart of every single PBS station across the country is education. We are first and foremost an education platform um, for, and not just in the traditional sense of education in terms of chemistry and math, although we do certainly have some of that, but it's also education in the form of um, health and healthy decisions. It's education, uh, mental health. It's education as far as learning more about the land that you live in and the community you're a part of. Um, but we also do want to be a resource for teachers, and we certainly have online um, resources that teachers can access. So I think education is always a part of the conversation in any project that we seek, seek to produce. Um, and then the community outreach part is part of being in a living, breathing community. We don't want to be back here behind, behind the walls, sort of oblivious to the, to the culture that we live in. We want to be involved in community events. We want to cover events that we think are important in the community. We want to bring sort of the community culture to people. So another show that we have, we've not started production on, but we are in the, in the works of um, 
sort of trying to outline is uh, a musical show kind of along the lines of Austin City Limits. Are you familiar mm. with that? Absolutely, absolutely. But like with a Southwest Virginia <laughs> bluegrass <laughs> country flair to yeah. it that we think will have mass appeal across the country. And that's a good point um, as I think of it. These programs will be available on demand across the country. It is not that the, the on-demand programs are not geofenced to Southwest Virginia. So anyone who lives in any part of the country can go to pbs.org and click on these shows and, and get a taste of this area. And that relates to the economic development piece there as well, indirectly. Um, so tell us about the funding sources. How does it get paid for? <laughs> so there are many ways that we seek funding. Um, as a startup station, we may be just a little bit different in terms of how we get funding from other um, PBS stations, but first and foremost, we want to say thank you to the members of the General Assembly in the Commonwealth of Virginia. They, were, they had the foresight to fund us at the very beginning of this, before we had any shows on television, before we even had a studio. They seeded us with startup money, and on an annual basis, uh, we and other PBS stations in the Commonwealth will continue to look to the General Assembly for some level of funding because we do believe that as a public service, um, that is something that, um, that the Commonwealth should contribute to. So that's one funding source. Um, a second funding source is what we call corporate support. As you know, when you watch PBS, you don't get commercials. Right. And the reason we, we are able to maintain that is because uh, we have community-minded businesses who want to be part of what we're doing, who will support a program. So sometimes you might watch a show on PBS and at the beginning they'll say, brought to you by, and then the name of a company. That, that is in lieu of commercials, that is how a corporation can support PBS. So we certainly welcome any companies that, that want to share their support by getting in touch with us. Um, so. That's a second funding source. And then, of course, it's viewers like you. PBS <laughs> is built on community support and donations. Um, so we certainly encourage all of our members to uh, become members of Blue Ridge PBS and PBS Appalachia and show your support that program like this is important, programming like this, because if you don't support your local stations, you know, um, our survival is at risk. We want to be here for the community, but the community has to show us some love as well to help keep us afloat. Um, the one thing I didn't mention, if you noticed, was federal funding. Mm -hmm. And although most stations get federal funding through the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, as a brand new, all digital station without a transmitter, um, that's not something we're tapping into yet because we're sort of a pilot program. Mm -hmm. And we hope that once this proves to be very successful, um, we will be able to participate in, in federal funding as well. Well, tell us about, because it's a new station, what about the facility? Is it going to be state of the art? Is it going to be unique in some way, given that it will be totally digital? Well, Bob, I have a secret. Uh oh. <laughs> and, I, and we won't tell anybody. We won't tell anybody. Just share with uh, So I cannot <laughs> announce specifically where we're going just yet, but I, I will tell you this. Um, it is a state-of-the-art facility located in Southwest Virginia, in Bristol, and um, it's going to have a lot of foot traffic, and mm. uh, it's really going to be something you want to come and see. When we build these studios, they're going to have an all-glass enclosure, so when you come to visit us, you can see what we're doing. When we're producing television shows like this, you'll be able to look into the studio and see how it works. Um, and we'll also, as a public television station, make it available um, to some extent for, for organizations that need a studio as well. But it's going to be high-end equipment, uh, a state-of-the-art facility that Southwest Virginia can really be proud of. And what makes that special too, imagine school groups and what have you be able to see things in action. And so that's another great concept for the, that facility itself. And journalism, uh, I've been in this business for a very, very <laughs> long time. I won't tell you how long. Um, journalism has changed a lot. Um, it used to be when you went out on a shoot, you went with a crew, right? And who was involved in your crew? Well, it was um, a reporter, it was someone in lighting, someone in sound, someone who's running the camera, and you probably had a producer. So, you know, if you watch movies from like the 80s, you have a crew that rushes to the scene. Well, nowadays, that crew is usually just a video journalist with a backpack and a phone. And in that backpack is the ability to transmit a live signal um, and broadcast it. So. 
So that's a good point. The education part about our industry has changed so much that when school children come in and want to see how it's all done, it's just a whole new world. So when does the station start airing programming? When does it premiere, if I may use that term? So our launch date is June 10th of this year, 2023. So the countdown is on. It's on. Uh, we are underway now uh, producing programs, uh, starting construction on our studio, and hopefully pretty soon you'll all see a pretty big p push in your social media. Um, so when you see PBS Appalachia, you can, we've got a page started. You can follow us. You can like us comment we'd love to hear from you and so tell us about the launch i mean it's going to be bells and whistles and everything i mean we will know about it and you're exciting for a big launch exciting indeed so i guess when we talk about the launch we should think of it in two ways one is going to be the launch of the digital station which is when you will be able to see us on television through cable and on your app and on demand you will be able to access us as of june 10th with all your programming but the other launch we're, we're planning is when we do the ribbon cutting and debut our beautiful new studio. Now, of course, that's going to take time to build. We're looking at probably a one-year build. Mm -hmm. So I think to actually come visit us and see our studio, you're looking at June or July of 24. So tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, people certainly may recognize you from WCYB in terms of Bristol. Uh, but tell us your journey, a little bit about yourself. Well, how far back do you want me to go? Well. <laughs> Uh, my uh, career uh, has been as a journalist. Uh, I started working in television in 1999, so 24 years I've been doing this, and largely it was in commercial television. I started in the news business, um, worked at several local stations, um, and then uh, I came to a station in Virginia at WSET, uh, Channel mm -hmm. 13, and I was with them for a while, and when I started having children, the schedule of, of commercial news is not very friendly to a new mother. And I had a, an infant and a two-year-old at that time, and so I decided to take a break from commercial news. And I didn't really have an intention of coming back to work at the time, but I got a call from Blue Ridge PBS. They were starting a program, it was called Job Quest, helping people during the recession of 2008 and 9 get back to work. And I started um, working for Blue Ridge PBS. So this is actually my second time working um, with Blue Ridge Public Television. So after I spent a couple years here, I felt that calling to go back to commercial news, and that's when I went to WCYB, which is in Southwest Virginia, and spent 10 years there as the uh, evening news anchor. I did the 5, 5, 30, 6, and 11 o'clock news. And, um, and what that really taught me was, was that Southwest Virginia is a place that I want to live and know and be a part of. And so when this idea came about, at Blue Ridge PBS um, through w Will Anderson, he's the president of the company, we just started having conversations about how we can more robustly serve Southwest Virginia, um, sort of fill an unserviced area. And we started talking about um, the digital idea and how that came to be. And so I made the decision that this was a more fulfilling way to serve Southwest Virginia than simply coming to you every night and reading the news. And so the motivation is an opportunity, but it's also uh, a commitment and a sense of mission, I, I take it for you. Very, very mission driven. We believe strongly that the people of Southwest Virginia deserve um, to have a reflection of themselves on TV. I don't feel like it's a region that is very well represented in national media. And when it is, I feel like it tends to fall into a stereotype that may be a bit antiquated. And while we certainly don't want to forget our history or deny the heritage or our mountain roots or, our, or the coal mining era, it's certainly part of who we are. We think it's important to explore the era as we emerge from the coal field era and um, look to just educate people on just what a beautiful and talented area of the country it is. So it's very, very mission driven. We feel called to give, give that part of the country better service. Well, as, a, as, I, as I say, and people snicker from now, but I'm, I'm a hibbly from Boone, North Carolina. <laughs> and, um, and there's something very special um, about Appalachia. Um, indeed, I have felt at times that one of the disappointments in even some of the institutions, and of course I'm retired now from Virginia Tech, so I can say some naughty things once in a while. <laughs> but to serve an area that 
my goodness, when it comes to uh, the economic uh, turns, when it comes to health care, and in terms of disease, in terms of uh, Southwest Virginia, it is a region that has in many ways sometimes been somewhat ignored, and yet the culture is so, is so rich. So rich. I remember being a little bit embarrassed on a Sunday afternoon after dinner that one grandpa was playing the banjo and the other one was doing um, kind of a tap dancing. And of course, my goodness, what I'd give to see them do that now. It's a very special. Uh, it's alive and well in Southwest Virginia. Um, there are so many places uh, where you can go and find that banjo picking and people dancing on a wooden floor. It still exists. That culture is still rich and alive. And that sort of um, hillbilly comment that you made, that is kind of who we are. We're still kind of <laughs> proud of that, too. Like, we, we are not offended by that comment. No, 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 we no, just no, want no. the world to know that there is more as well. So we do have that part of our, um, our personality as a culture, but we are also, um, I've never been to an area of the country that, has, that exudes more talent. I mean, you have musicians, you have artists, you have writers, you have glass blowers, you have quilters, you have potters. I mean, people here use their hands, I think, in a, in a way that you just don't see in some bigger cities. And we want to celebrate that. When we say we want to celebrate Southwest Virginia, that's what we mean. Celebrate the land, celebrate the people, and celebrate the history. So, in the final um, three or four minutes or so, in terms of your greatest challenges, what do you see them? Thank you the for asking that. The challenge you're saying, okay, the vision is there, the yes. vision is tight, the direction is clear, the programming is exciting and of course the natural resources and people are there. Right. What's some of your greatest challenges? So you mentioned funding um, and yeah. while we are so grateful for the startup money we've received from the Commonwealth, from the Tobacco Commission, um, hopefully from the ARC, I'll let you know how that goes. <laughs> um, we're so grateful for that funding but it is important for us to be financially viable, to stand on our own two feet and not have to depend on grants that may or may not come through or money from the Commonwealth that may or may, may not pass given you know, a particular political leaning of the legislature, right? So if we get comfortable and we start to rely on those sources of funding, um, there's potential that we could fail if we don't look forward and create sustainable lines of revenue where we can stand on our own two feet and not rely on those unpredictable sources of funding. So funding is one of the things that I think is a challenge. And the other one, quite frankly, in the beginning is just getting the word out. Mm -hmm. um, tell your friends, <laughs> follow us on social media, repost us. Um, we really want people to know that we're coming and uh, we, we hope that we will be embraced by the community. The reaction has been lovely so far, um, but we really want people to know we're here and we're here to serve. In our final uh, moments that we have five years from now, what do you anticipate, what do you hope, what will be said about here we are in terms of PBS Appalachia? Well, Bob, not to be too humble here, but we're going to be a really big deal. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you what I mean by that. I mean in terms of awards, mm -hmm. I think we're going to have uh, national and uh, regional accolades. We are going to submit for Emmy Awards for the incredible work that we're doing. As a matter of fact, um, some of our shows have already won awards, mm -hmm. including Hometowns and um, Life of a Musician and uh, French Magnolia. We have submitted for uh, more than a dozen Emmys. So we think we'll be successful in terms of peer recognition. We think we'll be successful in terms of the volume of content and, and valuable, meaningful content that we create. And we think that we'll be a uh, top-notch production house that people will look to to uh, seek our, um, our, our services as a really, really top-notch production house that produces great quality video. Well, you know, it's extremely exciting. Um, and I'm certainly very proud to, to be from um, the Appalachia region. And this is a wonderful initiative. And I obviously wish you the very best, but I know it's going to go very well. Thank you so much. And by the way, I'm a Virginia girl through and through. 
born in Virginia, went to college in Virginia. It was a little more on the East Coast, but most of my working career has been in Virginia. So this is near and dear to my heart. And um, it, like you said, it's very mission driven. And, and this is what the Commonwealth deserves. Amen on that. And that's unfortunately all the time we have. <laughs> I want to thank my guest, Julie Newman, for joining me. And of course, I want to thank you for joining us and hope you do so again for the next conversation with Bob Denton.